Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0 .90 Beta. In this episode, I intend to land Kerbals on the moon. That's, that's the size of it. We have a plant a flag on the moon contract and uh, here they are. They're ready to go. Now, I on editing the previous video, I realized that Orson Kerman is actually the scientist and so we don't have a pilot on this side. But that should be alright because we have the Saturn instrumentation unit. So uh, we'll just leave it as it is and we'll carry two pilots down to the surface and it should be fine. Uh, this is a uh, plant a flag mission, you know, uh, boots on the ground kind of thing. Uh, not, uh, not a heavy science mission. We're not carrying too much science with us. So uh, hopefully this will be alright. We don't have a science junior for instance. So yeah, I'm going to extend the solar panels on the lander and then we will proceed. Okay, well, it isn't, uh, n there's, there's nothing picky about uh, where we're going to land except that we should land on the bright side, which unfortunately is out of communication with uh, Earth, but that's alright because we're going to have manual control anyway, local control I should say. So yeah, okay, I believe it is time to undock. and we'll switch over to this side and we will use RCS to back off okay so let's plot the retro burn no uh, actually I remember with the probe also we didn't do the retro burn on the opposite side of the planet because we didn't want to relight the engines so often so we're not actually going to do the retro burn like that we will actually just do a single descent burn like we did with the probe and we'll see how to angle that right probably we won't want it going like that so we'll pitch up a little bit instead of just doing flat retrograde I'll handle that at the time but let's say we do it here and we'll we'll land somewhere on the bright side of the moon so that's probably a good thing okay We'll aim for that. Now I don't know if we've done a goo container in orbit like this, probably. Oh, okay, we haven't, it looks like. Well, we haven't, re yeah, we haven't, wow. Okay, well, let's keep the data then. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh no, whoa, whoa, whoa. What the heck? How did we start drifting towards it? Um, um, uh, <laughs> this is delicate situation right here. Just stabilize, huh? We clipped into its forward heat shield. It uh, doesn't look like it's done any damage. We've still got our docking mechanism. Uh, of course, they're both spinning out of control. Ah, well, should have put some more distance apart, I suppose. Well, uh, just 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 to be nice, I'm going to uh, stop Orson from spinning since we know that uh, he can't do that on his own. Here, why don't we have you uh, point uh, prograde, just for the heck of it? He's got extra extra fuel as far as the RCS ports are concerned, anyway. Lots of fuel. No, it says uh, RCS ISP here is 100. I hope that that's actually the atmosphere and hasn't reset because it hasn't fired because that's pretty horrible. Hopefully that's safe enough. All right, uh, why don't we have this one turn towards the node while we're at it? And I guess we'll just let it fire the RCS ports. How much RCS fuel do we have? We have a bit left. We're using some from the top though, darn it. Okay, well, it's gonna have persistent. Uh, no, this doesn't have persistent rotation. I have to remember now. I'm working on a Realism Overhaul 1.0.4 install, and uh, that, uh, they just released RP0 for, for 1.0, etc., uh, recently, and I've put persistent rotation there, and I'm trying to get used to that. 
So, yeah. But this doesn't add persistent rotation, so that's nice. Okay. Persistent rotation... I mean, even if you stabilize like this, it seems to end up, because there's a tiny little bit of variation, ends up spinning the probe or whatever you're working with all over the place. But, uh, yeah. This is not going to be subject to that. And I have to remember that. Okay, so we are just getting ready and I don't want smart ASS on because I'm going to be tilting away from retrograde. In fact, I'll probably leave it to about this high. Just so that we have enough time to burn these, these engines. But let me move the fuel up and refill those green tanks. So my expectation is that I'm going to be continuing this series, but I'll be doing, I guess, the initial phases of Realism Overhaul and 1.0.4 on Twitch live. And that's because those parts tend to go a little bit faster, and uh, people will be able to tell me what the heck I'm doing wrong with, because uh, I'm going to be trying out new mods like uh, Kerbal Construction Time, Test Flight, and stuff like that. So I'll get feedback a little bit quicker and I won't uh, have to struggle quite so much uh, thanks to that help. So I think I'll uh, go with that mode first. Uh, yeah, I think Twitch will be alright for that. I was worried that Realism Overhaul, uh, because of the length of the burns and all that, wouldn't be really conducive to uh, Twitch and live streaming. But uh, we recently did a mission to Neptune and did another mission, uh, an attempted Titan lander that didn't work out. And so uh, those were quite long, obviously, and still things managed to be all right. So I think uh, I'll start off, of course, I'll still uh, produce the videos for YouTube, but I'll start off doing the new career in live streaming. And so that'll give me a reason to continue this as well, because we haven't really we haven't gotten them to Mars yet, for instance, and I'd be interested to see with the severe limitations that we have in certain uh, respects, whether we can get Kerbals to Mars would be interesting. So yeah. Okay, so with that said, I think there's no particular reason why we have to wait for that. Let's uh, let's get on with it. I'm gonna get rid of that node as well. Alright, so settling the fuel down. Now wait for one meter per second on this. We'll switch to surface velocity actually. Now I'll also be doing stock stuff on Twitch, so it'll say what I'm doing in the header, to be clear. Okay, here we go. Any science we should do around here? I don't think so, but let's check the temperature. No, the temperature's been done. I think we have duplicates of the instruments. Oh, we should activate CO2 scrubber while we're here. And I don't know, a crew report? No, nah, that's been done. Okay. Looks like it's just going to be Midlands according to the thing. We're coming in from very high, actually. Uh, 129 kilometers is pretty darn high. This is not going to be very efficient. But I think we should have enough fuel. And it's not going to be very efficient because gravity is going to have a lot of time to, uh, to accelerate us. And so that's why uh, you'll see that they normally want to skim around the surface of the moon. Because that gives gravity very little time to... Uh, to accelerate and cause us to have to burn off more vertical velocity. But we did it this way because we didn't want to relight the RL-10s so often. And we don't have the normal lunar descent engine. So if I was going to use the lunar module, lunar descent engine, and lunar ascent engine, we would have probably made this stage smaller. We have shortened it up, and so it wouldn't have to do this part of the the burn. We seem to have a surplus of oxygen here. Now we gotta end up with a surplus of oxygen. The ratio seems 
I don't know. Hmm. Small surplus of oxygen. Oxygen. I don't know why. Okay, let me check how these tanks are. Uh, just one unit. I'll let it be. All right, let's set. Hmm. I press spacebar. Let me just double check. Okay, remote tech shouldn't be doing anything. Let me press spacebar again. Okay. And let's activate these engines. Okay. Gear down. And we don't need to do anything about this for a while. Well, now we wait. Haddock and Matford descending from 100 kilometers. Yep, we've moved into lunar seas, so there's some sort of mare of some kind, according to this. Not sure about that, but we'll check the map later on. Well, I think I'll wait until 30 seconds on the suicide burn countdown. Maybe dodgy. I don't know to what extent I should trust it. But I'll go with that. It seems to seems to give me more time rather than less. I hope that's the case. Okay, here we go. As you can see, not very much acceleration or deceleration on this. Okay, well, looks like that would not be a good place to land, nor would that, but the ground that we seem to be aimed for doesn't seem too slopey. I hope. There are definitely some slopes around. That would be horrible. Okay, I think I can shut off for now. I'll once again wait until there's 30 seconds left. I want to continue drifting in this direction away from this area here. I'm just going to go straight up and down because I still want some horizontal velocity to move away from this. Okay, here we go again. Controlling with fine controls, so minimizing RCS usage, trying to steer with that. Uh, quite, 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 quite a lot of rolling hills here. Lots of hills. Now again, there's no throttling on these engines. It's just uh, on or off on these thrusters. I think it's once again time to shut them off. We'll drift down a bit. Now it looks like we're we're okay. Well, I, would, I wouldn't say okay. It's still all very worrying terrain. And I'm gonna point directly at retrograde. And for the next burn, I'll probably have RCS on full instead of on fine controls. All right, two minutes thirty seconds left in the stage. 1 minute 10 seconds to impact. Okay, 2 minutes left in the stage. I'm cutting that. Let's drift down for a little bit more. Ooh, look at that chasm. That would not have been good. That would have been horrible. Okay. Minute eight of fuel left, time to impact fifty five seconds. Okay, here we go for final burn, hopefully. There'll probably be a few small burns after this, but this is the main one to kill velocity. One minute left. The suicide burn countdown is still a mysterious thing to me. I know how it's supposed to be calculated, it just doesn't seem to be calculated that way. Because it starts going up immediately, which it shouldn't be doing like that. Okay. Oh, wow, that's a slope. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. 
No. What? Uh. Oh. Okay. That was a slope. Now we're in trouble. All right. Well, <laughs> Matt for I mean, insufficient avionics. There's another pilot in there. Well, uh, maybe I don't know. Whatever. <sighs> wow. Plop. Okay. First of all, let's get the contract done, and then we'll think about what else to do with this. Don't know if some creative flipping will work. Here, uh, plant a flag. Okay, so, uh, Maffert on the moon. Okay. But how will we get back? And, uh, yeah, I, I forgot the other one's name, so that's why I'm not putting the other one's name there. But anyway, the point is the point. Okay, uh, okay, keep that. Keep that. Oh, <laughs> oh, sure, whatever. Uh, don't glitch into the ladder. Why are, why are the ladders glitchy anyway? It's probably because of the way they modify them. Come on. Let's just avoid the ladder altogether, huh? Board. Okay. Geiger counter. Oh, we've already done it from here. Well, we have sent probes. Alright, uh, crew report. We'll have uh, our Haddock Kerman do that. Crew assessment of the situation should be quite interesting. And goo container. Oh, we've already done goo container here. Oh, well. Okay. Well, let's uh, pick you up. I think, uh, forgive me, but this is going to be one time where I I quick save. If that's possible, yeah. Quick saving here. This is just an unfortunate series of events. Uh, okay. I guess, uh, can we spin it around? We can't even spin it around. Oh, oh, oh. Why can't I steer this? This should be steerable. <sighs> okay, well, if we lose any more of it, that's going to be a problem.
Okay, this is not good. Okay, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna load. So yeah, this is gonna get real Kerbal real fast now. Nope, that didn't quite work out the way I wanted it to. Oh. Come on, little guy, fly, fly. Fly. <laughs> oh, crap. Okay, clearly I need some sort of cunning plant. Now, turning it around using RCS I don't think it's gonna work but uh, I guess we don't have anything better to do right now so let's see if we can nope we can't nudge it at all I don't see the heading change how about if we give it a little bit of thrust first get sliding can it turn I want it to point uphill rather than downhill I don't get a particularly good feeling about this. Would decoupling give us enough of a kick? Uh, nope. Oh, come on, come on. Yeah, nobody cares about the solar panels. Now, just to be clear, our rescue mission is not an option. They do not have enough supplies. So uh, let's not pretend that that's a thing. This is a very bad design for trying to do this sort of thing. Well, we are turning it. I want to go uphill. That's critical. If we can go uphill, then we're we're in a much better shape. Come on. Gotta keep the side pods on. Uh, okay, let's stage him. Okay, ignore the explosions.
Ignore the fact that you're going the wrong direction. Uh, we don't have a lot of control with this. Uh, I don't know if we lost some RCS. No, we've seemed to have our RCS ports. I, I don't know. We're not going. We need to. Uh, we need to go retrograde, right? I think. Hold on. Okay. Well, we've got. We, we've got. Let's just go up for now. Um. All right. Uh, let's target our other guy. Whew. Okay. Uh, well, uh, we're going up. <laughs> uh, holy mackerel. Okay, so not entirely clear what heading I should be going at to hit that. Seems like a little bit north of, uh, it seems like around here. I'm not sure though. We're not going to have a lot of fuel left over once we get up. We need a lot of time to apoapsis. You'll see our stage time is 7 minutes and 52 seconds, so we can't just flatten out. Well, the target marker is over there. So maybe I should be tilting like this a little bit more. Yeah. We'll have to EVA to grab the science. We've left a bit of debris on the moon. Pretty much what we expected to leave anyway, I suppose. Okay, we definitely need more pitch here. So forgive me for the quote unquote simulated versions of trying to get this off of the ground, but uh, since there was no option to save the Kerbal lives otherwise, I had to go with that for, for the only time in the series, so. Well, full disclosure anyway. There's probably no point checking this out again. It's, it's the same one, I believe, that we have on the other side. And Guy Counter must have been done near the moon before. Huh. Alright, well, keep data. I don't know. Thermometer? No. And crew report. Nope, you do a crew report. Well, that's been done. Well, we're doing a good job of correcting the inclinations, so that's that's a good point. We'll go into a much lower orbit to catch up with it. That shouldn't be too hard. Okay, well, in terms of velocity, we're about halfway to orbit. Everything's looking quite good. Okay, we've passed Apoapsis, but uh, as usual, that is quite common. No big problem here. Looks like we'll get into a nice low orbit as planned. We can see closest approach distance is diminishing. And probably I'll just look at that to see when I should shut the engines down. Probably want a tangency or something. But if it starts going up, I'll definitely shut down. Okay, here we go. Getting close. S oh, started going up. Uh, well, that's short of orbit, so... Okay, that should be safe all around. Very tight. Well, we didn't get both Kerbals out on EVA because we were in an emergency situation. I wouldn't say that this 
I, I don't think I could call this uh, success by any stretch of the imagination. So uh, I won't claim that. But uh, I'd say that the, the mission structure was fine. It was just the whole, uh, you know, actually landing safely part. It didn't go quite right. Okay, separation 0.0. .0. Seems a little bit dangerous, but I guess we'll go with that. Looks like we have enough fuel here for this part to do all the rendezvous stuff. Okay. Well, here we go. Let's line up properly. I'll have Smart ASS hold us to the node. And turn it off so it doesn't wander with it. Okay. Well, here we go. Ooh. That closest approach distance started wandering quite quickly. Let me get fine controls. Maybe that'll get us closer. Okay, 150 meters is fine. Okay. Let's go to that location and get down to business. Okay, I guess we'll just uh, face the Gladys and the Gladys will face us and then we will get on with business. It's got plenty of fuel too in terms of momethylhydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide, which it's not going to use for the return. It's still going to use the RL-10 to boost it back to Earth. Okay, pretty high variance on the closest approach distance. We know what happened last time, so I'm not going to trust that too much right now. Okay, got the closest approach distance to about 100 millimeters, 0.1 meters. Uh, but it varies quite a lot. Seems to like it when the when the velocity marker is a little bit lower than the target. Not too sure about that. Let me just make sure. It shouldn't make any difference actually, but uh, let's just control from the, the appropriate places. Yeah, why why does it want the velocity marker a little bit off like that? I don't know. You'd think that, and we are a bit off. Hold on, I'm gonna slow down. This is not working out quite the way I want it to. So. Okay, close approach distance is once again good. Our velocity marker is lined up much better. Going a little bit fast. Still wants the velocity marker over here somewhere. Weird. We're pretty lined up from the look of it. Doing this very gingerly. We're certainly not uh, 0.7 meters off, not by the look of it at all. Taking SAS off. Bad enough having SAS on one end. Okay, there we go. Alright, so we're all docked and we'll transfer, well, let's have Haddock uh, EVA to grab the, the science. Can't uh, get that like that, so he's going to have to fully EVA. By the way, on the Apollo missions, there were EVAs to grab science, amazingly enough. 
It was uh, mid a cislunar EVA, if you will. Uh, not not on the early missions, but on the later missions. Surprised me as well. Hmm. I can't get this. I'm pretty sure we did one Geiger counter experiment. Get as close as possible. Tell you what, I'll have uh, Mattford give it a go. Let me have Haddock uh, just uh, grab the stuff from his pod. Uh, is there a new EVA here? No. Okay, grab. Can we get? Can they not? Can they not grab more than one data at a time? Hold on. Because so he stored the data. Let's see. Let me just EVA. Doesn't seem to be able to grab that data. What? You mean we can't grab the data? Why can't we grab the data? That's not fair. Or is he already carrying the data? No, he's not carrying the data. How are we going to transfer the data? Um, is there a mod for that? This is a problem. So what we we can't well obviously that's useless. Well let's just board him and transfer. I think we, we, we might be in a situation where we're going to lose the data. There is stored data here. Let's uh, let's transfer Orson. Maybe Orson can grab it. Can't see why that would be the case, but uh, okay. EVA. Orson. No, can't grab it. Yeah, I know there's no damage, but we want the science board. Oh, a review report. Okay, well let's transmit this anyway. There's no comms. Yeah, because we expected to be able to retrieve it. Well, I know this is not a problem in stock, so there's some mod that's messing with our ability to retrieve science, which is sort of important in Kerbal. Let me let me quit out and come back in. Maybe that'll work. You know, sometimes sometimes that solves the problem. Let me do that. Okay, let's try this again. Haddock. Uh, Haddock's on the other side. Orson EVA. Right click. Nope. So restarting didn't help. Maybe maybe they need to be of a certain level pilot or scientist in order to retrieve the science. I shouldn't have had them. I mean, but then again, Haddock was able to get to the goo container and take that science. Just couldn't. Uh, hold on. I guess I guess there's no way of getting that science now, right? Yeah, that science is all gone. But wasn't able to get any other science. Maybe something was damaged during all the rolling around on the moon. I, I guess this is the penalty. So, yeah, I guess the penalty for for our failed landing, I mean, well, I wouldn't say failed, uh, our sloppy landing on the moon and uh, questionable ascent has been uh, this sort of thing. Not being able to retrieve our science. Is it fair? I don't know. I'll leave it up to you guys. But I'm sort of bummed out. So this is all empty now. Oh well, there goes any scientific merit this might have had. Okay. 
Well, nothing left to do but to bring them home. Well, it doesn't uh, look like it's going to take much to bring them back. Uh, probably 800 or so. I guess we'll use the precise note thing to figure out exactly how much. We will make adjustments, of course. Let's get at 92 for now, and then we'll make adjustments using RCS, probably. All right. Okay, once that's done, settling the fuel down. And the final ignition of the RL-10s. Okay, we're on escape from the moon, preparing for engine shutdown. Okay, engine shut down, and let's do the fine tuning with our RCS. I'm gonna set it to 70 kilometers, that's usually safe. We might skip out though. Maybe. Maybe 68.6 doesn't sound too bad. Okay, it'll probably be different once we exit out of the Moon Sphere influence. Okay, I'm gonna take RCS off and we will. We will depart the moon now. Do we really need three different types of CO2 scrubbers? I mean, lithium hydroxide, lithium peroxide, and potassium, whatever it is. Uh, can we just have one? I really don't need all three. Whatever, anyway. Okay, well, a semi, a partial success for our first manned, crewed, kerbled moon landing so far. Uh, we have to get them safely back home. After this, I think I'm going to aim to land a probe on Mars and bring that back safely. So a sample return mission from Mars will probably be the next thing. Assuming we have uh, we have the funds for it. And if we have to build up funds we might have to do some of those contracts for that. So I mean we didn't max out our waste disposal amount. We've got plenty of space for extra carbon dioxide waste and waste water. Didn't use much of the lithium hydroxide actually. Oxygen, food, and water are replete. Okay, well now it's just a matter of when we dispose of our service module. We'll make a final correction, make sure the pod is oriented properly, and then we'll get rid of it. Looks like we're going to be coming in on the dark side. Not too sure what kind of terrain we'll end up hitting. That's another trick. Okay, here we go. Let's uh, let's get it oriented properly. Uh, I'm just gonna have Smart ASS point retrograde. There's no need to save fuel anymore. Uh oh, we've got a thing hanging out here. That that is. It looks. Well, it's, no, it's still there. I don't know what that's about. Hmm. Well, this has not been an uneventful journey, that's for sure. Okay, Smart ASS off. Going to uh, now unlock the RCS tanks here. Oh, this was locked. I wonder what good locking the carbon dioxide would do. It doesn't matter actually. Uh, we've got other waste disposal stuff, but anyway. Um, okay, so those are unlocked. I'm gonna say enable RCS port now. And we are going to 
hold this position and decouple everything else. Okay, let's try spacebar again. Okay. Let me... Okay, so that should be... Let's just have it hold retrograde. Maybe it can do that, maybe it can't. Okay. Gonna get on uh, descent mode. Hopefully that'll help. This other portion is technically still controllable. I could have just told it to move it off, but it looks like it's already started to move off anyway. Okay, well I'm using a lot of RCS when we haven't even hit the atmosphere. Let me turn it off entirely. Okay, let's get down to the atmosphere. 68.6 kilometers is our periapsis. Let's hope that's enough. Oop, there's a light blossoming there. Don't know what that's from. It's from this thing. This thing is this thing is worrying me, this thing floating around here. Here we go. Let's see, where are we coming down? Uh this is Africa, this is the Sahara Desert. Not the best place to recover Kerbinauts. Hmm, doesn't look like my periapsis was low enough. On the bright side, if they do skip off, it'll mean that they won't be coming down in the Sahara Desert, so that's probably a positive. G-force is at 3 Gs right now. And we have hit periapsis already. 427 degrees Celsius, nothing to worry about on the heating. But on skipping out, we don't want our trajectory on the next pass to come down too steeply. We don't really have a lot of RCS to adjust our orbit, so that's a thing. Gotta take RCS off now. Wow, our periapsis is going down very quickly here. I hope that we can adjust that. Technically the RCS on the command module isn't really supposed to do translational stuff. And I was curious about the ISP. Well, it still seems like it's a hundred ISP there. Seems unreasonable for hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide to have that low in efficiency. But we certainly used a lot of it to do very little. Okay, well we're gonna have to go all the way back up and we need to lift our periapsis a bit. I hope the RCS on here is up to that task. Okay, that's not much. No, everything seems to be doing the wrong thing. Fudge. Okay, um... Everything seems to be making things worse. Okay, well that's making things better now. But... Not by a lot. This is not good. Nothing I do seems to be getting our periapsis up to safe levels. Yeah, I mean the the ports on here aren't really oriented to give us that kind of a push. They're like here and... Dang it. I should have corrected it while I was passing through the atmosphere using... Yeah, I can't, I can't do this. Okay. Yeah, I can't control it anymore than I have. I don't know if they gotta survive 54 kilometers. That's pretty harsh. G-forces are harsh. Heating is probably not the thing I'm worried about. Well, let's hope we, uh... 
Get a crap load of lift. It's still that little floaty thing creating light. I'll have to let it settle. I don't have enough fuel left to do anything. I do think that the RCS ports are misconfigured, that they are using a lot more fuel than they ought to. Well, we'll definitely be coming down this time. 3 G's, 460 degrees Celsius, 64 kilometers altitude. Four G's, six hundred degrees Celsius, sixty one kilometers. Uh, something is burning. Uh, whatever burns certainly shouldn't have. That was the heat shield. We just lost the heat shield. How could we lose the heat shield? G forces severe. I have no control over this. And, uh, well, seems like we have a tragic loss of the Kerbals. I was hopeful, but I don't know. Clearly we should have done tests on that heat shield to see that it was actually working properly. So this definitely did not go the way I wanted it to. And I think, well, next time uh, we, will, we will attempt a Mars mission. Might be a while before I try and send Kerbals to the moon again. Alright, well, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.